9.55 a.m. Mr. Wynarski, Ms. Allen, Mr. Brzezinski, Mr. Keyes, Mrs. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon. Please rise for a moment of silent meditation and Pledge of Allegiance. from the City Council meeting of Wednesday, December 18th, 2019, and bills for payment on January 3rd, 10th, 2020. Ms. Allen, Ms. Brzezinski, Mr. Keyes, Ms. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Wynarski. We've got a resolution sponsored by Mr. Witherspoon and seconded by Mrs. Schaff. Resolved by the Council of the City of Erie that City Council nominates Councilman James Winarski as President of City Council for the year 2020. Ms. Allen. I have some things I want to say before I vote. Uh, one year ago, I pulled out my pink pussy hat and announced that I intended to run for Erie City Council President. However, I never had a chance to make the case because at the last City Council meeting of the year, the incumbent president announced that he intended to seek re-election based on his record. So I'm taking this opportunity to tell citizens what I would have set out to accomplish in the 2020 term of City Council and what I hope my colleagues will also agree are things that we need to tackle. First, I would have asked my colleagues to review the legislation we had enacted in the previous two years. I have pressed the mayor's office about when the administration will begin to do job evaluations and I'm happy to know that those things are going forward. I'm very impressed with what the mayor is doing. So I think it's only fair that council will evaluate our own work in the following areas to see if the new ordinances we have passed have worked as intended. Decriminalizing marijuana, fines on aggressive panhandling, LERDA, uh, we set up a fund f with uh, LERDA application fees, so we need to know how we're going to grow that fund. But we also need to know how the properties that are coming off of the previous LERDA, uh, what's happening with those? Are those property owners paying their full taxes or have they appealed to have their assessment lowered? Smart cities, now that the innovation district no longer has a paid director in place, what does that mean for the program in which we obligated the city to pay for technology upgrades and free Wi-Fi? The rental inspection program, is the plan to allow good property owners to get a longer license working, a longer time frame license, higher parking ticket fines, are they being collected? Are they affecting residents who use on-street parking in disproportionate ways? Quality of life ticketing. How many tickets have been issued? Are they being paid? Has the process reduced blight? Inspections for child care centers. Did the inspections start? Are the centers in compliance? And going forward, how will we monitor the smoke-free uh, park ordinance? Um, at the beginning of 2019, I sent an email to my colleagues asking them to outline their goals for 2019 and I shared my goals. Only one council member, Kathy Schaff, responded with goals. I would ask council to figure out um, what our goals should be for 2020 and if those, how to make those goals, in, goals intentional in terms of making Erie more equitable, more environmentally sustainable, and if they're in line with Erie Refocus as well as the mayor's vision about making Erie a welcoming community, community with family sustaining jobs. I would recommend examining the structure of City Council, including both committee and liaison assignments, by areas of expertise and interest, perhaps finance, transportation, housing neighborhoods, public safety, community de development, and infrastructure. We need to set priorities. What's going to happen with Erie Water Works, with the East Bayfront plan, and very importantly, with filling the vacant seat here on Council. The last time we filled a vacant seat, the rules were changed at the last minute so that council members were allowed to vote, cast six votes for one person by secret ballot. That should not be the way the process works. Um, I've heard through the grapevine that I will never be council president because I don't go to the social clubs. And also because I had 
uh, on my short list of people to fill the vacancy when Bob Mursky's seat was, was open, I had all women on that list. Never mind that I went back and looked at all of our short list and one council person had all men on that list. Um, the women that I had on the short list, and we had created a really good list of possible uh, candidates for that seat we also had good men on that list, but the, of the people that I had on my short list, two of those candidates were accountants. One had executive experience and is now on county council, and two lived or worked in the Bayfront. So I think that we, we really need to look at uh, why people are um, being criticized in terms of uh, seeking gender equity and also um, we need to make sure that on our appointments that the uh, people we are appointing to boards and authorities reflect the city. So last time I had this as my prop and now I realize that really what I should have brought to my prop last year, and I wanna show you. beer glass and a shot glass. I have no intention of, I don't belong to any social clubs. I get my information by the people I talk to when I go to meetings, when I work at the library, when I ride the bus, when I ride my bike, and when I walk downtown. Thank you. Roll call, Ms. Allen. Yes. Mr. Brzezinski, Mr. Keyes, Ms. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. Congratulations, Mr. Winarski. Thank you. That brings us to repository sales. Is there anybody here this morning regarding any repository sales? Anybody here this morning regarding any repository sales? Hearing none, that brings us to citizens to be heard. My name is Fred Hepfer. I live at 1738 West 23rd Street in Erie. I'm a certified orientation and mobility specialist. I want to congratulate the new members of the council, especially Michael Keyes who by what you heard him say, showed his dedication to the kind of city we want to have, one that's really inclusive, and one that helps to, to raise everybody up. Um, I've known Michael and worked with him on a number of things. I don't know anybody else that's a recent elected person, but I do know Michael, so that's why I, I say that specifically. I am definitely concerned that the city council and the mayor continue, or even if they're not currently doing it, have a process for filling vacancies that is open and inclusive. The process for filling the current city council vacancy, the process for filling vacancies on planning commissions, steering committees for pedestrian plans, other types of committees that it should be open soliciting of applicants even though ms allen did not put me on her short list i will agree that that we need to have an open process and one that does not include six votes for one candidate by any council member um i i also want to say and and one of the people who's been critical of my efforts is somebody that we appointed to the planning commission we the city to the Planning Commission, somebody who has already evidenced their lack of inclusiveness, their lack of commitment to diversity, who has criticized me for, quote, putting my input in wherever I can. Well, if it seems like I'm in a lot of places, it's because I have a background in soil science, in water quality, in hazardous waste management, in recycling, in disability issues in health care issues, in environmental issues, and planning issues. And yeah, I have the time right now to do that. But it's important for people in our community to, to speak up and be heard. 
because pedestrians cannot travel safely in the city. There's almost no sidewalks on Pittsburgh Avenue um, between 21st and 12th. There's none between 21st and 12th, I believe, on the, on the city side. There's no way for a person walking down Pittsburgh Avenue to get all the way from 8th to 21st because they have to hop from one side to the other if there is even sidewalk. And on the city side where there is no sidewalk, there's actually physical obstructions in the way or huge mounds of snow. I don't know whether our pedestrian plan is even considering that, but we really need to have a city that welcomes and utilizes the input of the public. And that does not just um, do something like have a pedestrian planning committee with the planning director saying that she is an adequate representative for the interests of um, pedestrians. Anyway, I <coughs> welcome to the two new council members. Um, I expect a lot from you, Michael, and I know you'll come through. And um, I'm hoping that this, the city council employs an appropriate open process for filling the vacancy on the council. Thank you. Any other citizens this morning? Quiet meeting, that's for sure. <laughs> Hearing none, Rose, we'll move on with the agenda. Ordinances for first reading. Council file 16145, an ordinance amending the closing and vacating of approximately 4740 square feet of Wagner Avenue adjacent to 1602 Wagner Avenue to approximately 7500 square feet square feet of Wagner Avenue adjacent to 1602 Wagner Avenue. By Mr. Witherspoon, second by Ms. Shaw, that council file ordinance number 16145, having been read, is hereby adopted on first reading by the city council. Ms. Allen, Mr. Brzezinski, Mr. Keyes, Mrs. Shaw, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. City council read and adopt council file ordinance number 16145 by a six nay zero on first reading. By Miss Allen, second by Mr. Witherspoon. Resolved by the Council of the City of Erie that the proper city officials are hereby authorized and directed to issue an agreement with McGill Power Bell and Associates LLP, 1920 West 8th Street, for the audit of the early intervention grant for the finance office of the City of Erie not to exceed the amount of $3,000. Ms. Allen, Mr. Brzezinski, Mr. Keyes, Mrs. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. All right, do we have a second? I second. Any separations? All right, moving the balance of the agenda, Ms. Allen, Mr. Brzezinski, Mr. Keyes, Mrs. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. That'll take us to committee reports, Mr. President. Thank you. Ms. Allen? Yes, I wanted to let people know, um, kind of following up on what uh, Freda said, that there will be an opening on the Erie Land Bank. Um, I haven't put anything together on that yet. The current appointment expires <coughs> uh, today, I think. The Land Bank doesn't meet until the meeting date has been changed because of the Martin Luther King holiday. <coughs> but I want to uh, allow time for the current member to also uh, submit a resume. <clears throat> and you know what his outlook is for uh, the role of, of somebody serving on the land bank. Um, the, I just got an email that the Blighted Property Review Committee is canceled for this month and will meet again, I think it's February 12th. Um, I had a comment about, I know there's been a lot of complaining about the recycling bins. Uh, I bought a blue bin at Value Home Center for $5.97 and it fits all of the recycling in. So 
you don't have to pay $20 for a recycling bin. And I also think because this has, you know, a lot of people confused or some, you know, somewhat miffed about the recycling, the change in recycling rules, that one of the things we need to be looking at is not just recycling, but uh, actually, you know, in the environmental movement, we talk about uh, reducing so that we don't have to recycle. Um, so we should be thinking about that and sustainability going forward. Um, I spoke to the Jefferson um, Educational Society's uh, Civic Leadership uh, Group at City Hall um, right before the, uh, before the holidays, and there are, as always, a really good cohort of young people who are interested in making a difference in the city, and some of them are interested in serving in various capacities for the city, and they ask that we make sure that we um, advertise those openings in a variety of ways, not just on the City of Erie website, but share it on their social media. Um, the most fun thing I did was, I, and this was really not in my role as, as a city council person, but as a uh, freelance writer and retired journalist, I spoke at McKinley School to a fourth grade class, and I asked the kids how many people pay attention to the news, and a number of them did, but one little girl raised her hand and she said she watches David Muir every night on the ABC News. And I was so impressed, not just by the fact that she pays attention to the news, but that she knew the name of the news anchor. And I said to her, well, why are you paying attention to the news? You know, what makes you interested in the news? And she said she's especially interested in what's going on in Iran and Iraq. And mind you, this was a few weeks before we got ourselves into the current horrible mess that is going on in, in the Middle East. I asked her what she wanted to do someday, and she said she would like to become mayor. And so I immediately, uh, I actually saw uh, the mayor uh, a couple of hours later, and I told him, and he told me to pass along her name to, I think Michael Otlaw is going to be handling the mayor for a day program. But I just, to me, this was so encouraging at a time when there was criticism of, you know, the kind of education that kids are getting in the city schools. Um, Here's a young girl in McKinley School who is paying attention to the news and wants to make a difference. So despite all the <coughs> things that can get us to be discouraged, I walked out of that classroom very encouraged. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Mr. Witherspoon. Ms. Shaw. Thank you, Mr. President. I attended a Kwanzaa celebration at the Quality of Life Center that uh, Gary Horton had uh, led, and it was very beautiful. I think that uh, people should uh, celebrate their roots, their ethnic heritage, and um, was very... Uh, it was a big group, uh, a nice group of talented uh, students that performed and put on a style show. It was very affirming. I want to, uh, I guess I should have congratulated first our uh, council people that are on board for the next four years. And I look forward to working with you and making our city the great city that we have for leadership. And thank you so much for uh, being energized because this, as you know, Mr. Brzezinski from the past and Mr. Witherspoon, uh, it is a job. Yesterday, uh, someone accused me of closing the Coke plant and it really, uh, made me very sad the whole day to uh, think that they were that misinformed that I had closed the coke plant. Anyways, um, you have to have tough shoulders on this job and uh, a lot of time and commitment and a lot of energy. And speaking of energy, I had a, an email from a woman about trash in the neighborhood of the Energy Club, and I did take the time and walked through the neighborhood, 
and assess the situation as far as trash. And I had a, a trash bag in my hand uh, ready to pick up um, the trash. I went to the Our West Bayfront neighborhood meeting this past week and it was at 457 West 4th Street and I had never been in that building and it's such a welcoming beautiful place that uh, Gannon has energized for that neighborhood and I got a tour of it there was big community space and I got the ins and outs of the community meeting. I didn't have any problem looking for it. It was brightly lit and I went up to the door and they were very welcoming and I thought every neighborhood should have something like this. Wouldn't that be great that we could have a building like that in every neighborhood location? Very community oriented, just very welcoming and Candace Battles led the meeting and uh, kudos to her and all the other people like her in our city that feel a purpose to help others and to serve others in the best way that they know how and that's why I really liked the uh, initiation today it was like being at a wedding. I love weddings because you affirm the couple being married. You go over the vows that perhaps you have taken uh, with a loved one and you reflect and get energized all over again. So I feel that energy from this morning's vows that were taken and um, I'm ready to recommit myself for uh, 2020 and be accessible in any way to help wherever I am needed and to serve the mayoral administration as best as I can because I believe in Mayor Joe Schember's vision for Erie. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Schock. Mr. Keith. Councilman Keith. I would just like to uh, thank you for uh, welcoming me and uh, I look forward to uh, working with you in the future. Thank you, sir. Councilmember Zinsky. I'm tempted to say a lot of things today, James. I guess I should probably, Ms. Shock, what do you drink all the time? <laughs> Notice that. I Be just careful. put my rose colored glasses on every day and uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'll drink to that comment. Careful. People should be careful painting Everybody with the same brush. <laughs> anyway, that's all I'm going to say, James. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Uh, once again, I just want to thank my colleagues here on council for having the trust and confidence in me to lead this council once again in 2020. Uh, it is an honor. We've got work to do once again. Uh, biggest concerns are things that are going to face us in 2020 is determine if this water lease agreement is a viable and legitimate option that can work to the best to the city's benefits to the citizens benefit so we definitely just got to do our homework but that is top priority on our list as council uh, once again any additional revenues what we can incur for the city that it's one thing to get additional revenues for the city it's another thing hurting the taxpayers once again in the process so there's a fine line how we can increase our revenues but without hurting the citizens taking the brunt of the bill there uh, still want to uh, I know we're a third class city and I know it's been brought up in the past uh, one of the options may be that student fee for the college kids that come from out of town into our city that attend our colleges and our universities, if there's possibly a fee we can put on there because they do use our city services. They, they, they do get to take advantage of that. So 
whether that can be an option to increase some revenues. Once again, I'm going to ask our solicitor, I know I have in the past, although we came to an agreement with the parking authority for 2020, it still would like to see if it's a viable option if we were to disband that authority and take it over and what are the ramifications there. And if there's a way we can actually make more money in this, it's something we should look into. Uh, other than that, we do have uh, our liaisons and our appointments that we are going to work on with my council members. Uh, people got to understand, president is just one vote of the seven we have on this board. We will go through the process, and, I, and to be honest with you, I know somebody mentioned we had changed the process of how we voted last time. I think that system has been in play forever. There was no changes at the last minute. Yes, there were. I have the original. I'm sorry, yeah. I, I have to interject here if it's with all due respect, as everybody says. We had a piece of paper, and we, we had, um, we were supposed to vote um, by name, and then we got another. I saved these pieces of paper, okay? The next piece of paper we got said that you could vote for, you could cast all six votes for one person. I've never had an explanation about how that happened. I have the original piece of paper and the next piece of paper. So if the original was wrong, somebody needed to explain that. Also, I intend to ask the Office of uh, the, the Sun under the Sunshine Act, those votes are supposed to be public. They are not supposed to be secret. Rose. So I, have, gonna... I would like to know, that was not the process that was originally explained. So. Under that process, we had members of council who cast all six of their votes. Instead of looking at six different people to narrow it down, they put six votes on one person. So I want to know where, where we have a system where you get six votes for one person. That would be like walking in when I was running for city council and there were 17 candidates and I think there were four openings, and my husband going in and voting for me for four, time, four times. That's not the way it works. But if that is the way it works, then it's wrong. Rose, I just want to, for the record, was anything switched in the process? The way uh, the yes, no, nothing was switched. I or The changed. first printout I sent out to everybody did not explain the bullet voting. I just expounded on the voting process in the second email. And so in previous votes, we've had people vote for six yes. votes. Okay, and yes. none of those votes were public, though, is that correct? Yes, that's And that correct. violates the Sunshine Act. If not, the, the letter of the law, it certainly violates the spirit of it. So in other words, if you are out there and you're thinking about running for uh, or putting your name in for this seat, I would say be aware at the beginning that the, that the fix is in. It is. The Wait. fix is in. We had 52 uh, uh, people who, Ms. 52 Ms. people. Allen, Ms. Allen, please, please. Anyway. Fix Ms., uh, is in. Who are you putting with those all, votes with, in for, Mel? Well, for me. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, we'll work on our committee reports, like I said, on who is going to get uh, what authorities, what liaison to what departments in the city hall itself. We'll work on that. Uh, there was one other thing that uh, I did want to bring up, uh, how our quality of life ticketing is going to be enforced a little more this year than in the past years, and then some type of ordinance that we can come up for these. Bottle clubs or after hour clubs, I believe a, a lot of our 2019 meetings were centered around issues from these bottle clubs or after hour clubs and uh, that isn't fair to the residents, that isn't fair to us on council to have to deal with this. It's, we have to take steps to uh, make changes or set an ordinance so uh, we don't run into this in the future. With that, I'd like to move it to our city controller. I just want to congratulate the newly elect elected officials and look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Ms. Lamus. 
I will also congratulate the new council members. Um, just a couple things I'll mention. Uh, Councilwoman Allen mentioned um, the Jefferson Educational Society uh, leadership program. They actually have their graduation this Thursday at the Jefferson Educational Center at um, 6 o'clock this Thursday, if anybody's interested in attending that. Um, and then um, also I look forward to working with you all in the new year. Um, last year we started a, a process by which we would meet uh, monthly with all council members to kind of talk about upcoming issues. Um, last year it was an hour in length, this year it's going to be an hour and a half in length, so hopefully that will give us more time for give and take and for council members to bring up issues as well. Um, the first one of those is tomorrow. I think, you know, I sent out an email, hopefully everybody can come in. Uh, if you didn't see the email and you want to talk to me afterwards, um, what we would like to do is give you a preview on what we've been working on for the last several months, um, which is activating the vision. Um, you know, we have the vision for the city of Erie, we have the mission, um, but we've really been working hard on how we can hold ourselves accountable and how we can measure our success along the lines of what Councilwoman Allen was talking about at the beginning about looking at how we're doing, how are we going to measure if we're actually moving the needle, and we would like to share that with you tomorrow in advance of um, announcing it at Thursday's press conference. So we look forward to working with you. Thank you. Attorney Betts. Congratulations to the new council members. I have nothing. Thank you. Rose, I think we can close this meeting. All right. City Council adjourns at 1026. Mr. Winarski, Ms. Allen, Mr. Brzezinski, Mr. Keyes, Mr. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh, eerie water. <laughs> Fresh, eerie water.